This is the Peerdom webinar on roles. Um, just to give you a quick idea about the format, the idea behind these is that we invite one of our like organizational coach consultants to to join us and give some tips from the field, some uh, yeah, what they've seen out there in the world in the wild. Uh, today, we're welcoming Mark Vethmar, who's, well, for me, he's right here, but I'm not really sure where he is for you. Um, he is joining us from Zurich, I believe. And uh, Mark, I've known for, yeah, for, for several years now and worked on a lot of different organizational projects, building roles. And so one thing I really like about Mark's style when he goes into an organization, I mean, I haven't been there with him, but what I can sense from from it is that he he's very much not prescriptive, like going in and saying, I will do this to that organization, but really sensitive to listening to what that really that the context needs and then creating solutions around that. So um, I think from his storytelling, I can tell that he's very he understands that every organization is its own beast and that each one requires uh, yeah, a little tender love and care. So um, after Mark goes into some, some stories about, uh, yeah, all things role related inside of uh, organizations, then I'm going to open the floor to, to questions. So I would really, um, Appreciate it if you have questions to type them in the chat and I'll kind of collect them. And at that point, I will pass them to Mark because he won't be reading them meanwhile. And so uh, ask the expert, the, the floor will be his uh, for, for answering. And then I'll, I'll pop in after that with a very pragmatic demo um, on the Peerdom software showing anything that I could think of that's role related. So I will leave everything else out and we'll only talk about roles. And I will try to make bridges to what Mark has said uh, as well to, to really give make it concrete about what you could do in software to represent what Mark is um, talking about in the first half. Um, and then, yeah, if you have questions for me as well, same story goes. So we'll try to keep this to an hour in total. Uh, we started just a couple minutes late, so we might run maybe five minutes after the hour. And um, that's that's the the game. So let's get it started. Mark, without further ado, Good. take it yeah. away. Hello, everybody. One one addition, uh, Nathan. I'm not an expert. If you look at my website, I refuse to be an expert. In the end, of course, I am. After 19 years of self-employed, I am an expert in helping the client to design a process which helps them to get further. But I really, I don't like the word uh, expert. Um, yes, I, I, I would like to start to share some of my client experiences in in uh, concerning real, very pragmatic the issue of role mapping, role definition. How does an organization uh, proceed in this? And as Nathan said, I, I don't have a blueprint for that. So preparing this, I saw how many variances I made already till now in, I think, eight or nine organizations where, which I facilitated the change with the help of Pierdom. Uh, and I will name them also because I think they, they are okay with them, but I would ask you to, uh, to deal with this information in, in the right way. Um, I think one of my first clients, please correct me, Nathan, was uh, Special Olympics. Special Olympics is the counterpart of uh, Paralympics, so people who are mentally disabled who want, like to participate in an Olympic uh, um, sport. And uh, I, I remember the first, I think it was the first time I, I, I facilitated a role a role mapping session, and it went like that. We were, I think, five people in the room. One was the at that moment, still CEO of the organization, Bruno. And, and uh, then it, it was about the defining the roles inside the change team. And there was a magical moment. I wrote about this in an article in German that, that, that at the moment it was the question, who's going to lead or, or hold the space of the circle who, who takes care about the change process inside the organization? And then Bruno 
I, I wasn't I wasn't prepared as I said very quickly. That's not me. Uh, it's it's Gabriel. So and Gabriel said, okay, he was uh, yeah, very I think twenty years younger, but way very skilled. And then Gabriel said, okay, I, I take that. So in the end, Bruno got sort of a Minister of Foreign Affairs, so outside the, the Special Olympics Switzerland towards the international organization. And, and, that, and then we go one step further. Okay, what does it mean to be a space holder? I think they called it uh, a guardian. So, so the, 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 the circle guardian, what does it mean to be a guardian? Is, is it a leader or what, what, what are his accountabilities, uh, etc.? So as I said, it was my first... Uh, baby steps in doing this and looking back at the several organizations which I facilitated, I did it never in the same way, but there were companies like a big pharma organization in Germany, where one department wanted to work self-manage with shared governance, and they had a very detailed uh, sort of, um, I say that, um, mapping with several questions uh, inside it. Uh, one which comes back nearly always was that people prepare themselves for these meetings. You can't do this unprepared. So there needs to be some kind of preparation. Like, for example, uh, think about your work and uh, think about what are bundles of, of activities I'm doing, which can be can be yeah, built around and and ask yourself what what are my accountabilities in this in this kind of tasks what what do i have to deliver in my perception and then one what one thing which comes back every all the time i remember is is it more formal role or formal thing or is it informal and so this is my self perception and with this preparation the the process starts so somebody says okay my bundle of activities is, for example, um, uh, taking care of X, Y, Z, and which means I deliver A, B, C, and I think it's uh, this part is more informal and this part is formal. And then the, the other people can say, "Oh, I didn't know this. This was your role." Uh, so yeah, interesting. So so then the, the the bargaining process starts. Okay, what what is my perception? What I am delivering, and what is the perception of of the other? Yes, this is something I think I nearly always had uh, included because, yeah, as you know, an organization is a formal organization, but also informal organization. So this role mapping helps to get this gap uh, smaller between the, the which is perceived as right and formal and which is more grown historically. Um, something else is, I think, before starting any role mapping, you have to be clear what, what is the purpose of the circle? So this, for example, in Special Olympics, this circle was clear. They guide the change process from being a more hierarchical organization to a more role-based organization. That was the purpose of the circle. And, and this purpose of the circle should be, of course, in line with the purpose of the organization. So I never start a role mapping process without, so I would say, good enough for now, safe enough to try which means 80% or 70% clearness on what is the contribution of the circle? What, what does the circle of people want to, want to contribute to what? And, and this, is, this is one other anchor for, for before you start something. Yeah, what else, what else can, I, can I share? Ah, yeah, uh, something else uh, I bring in, and I've made some mistakes. I will share one, uh, perhaps later more is that I, people ask me, yeah, but what, what is a role? So then I start explaining what, what is the difference between a role and, and the position and this bundle of activities, for example, and that people can have many roles, et cetera. But then they ask me, can, can you give me examples and or, or are there any standard roles? And then I say, okay, there are at least four standard roles in most organizations. One is somebody who holds a circle, somebody who is the archive, who writes down the results of, of a meeting, uh, the third one is somebody cares about the people, sort of coach, and what did I wrote? Ah, moderator. Yeah, moderator or facilitator. And in one organization, I will show you uh, an example of out of Pirom. Uh, I say they made a mistake, or I, I allowed them to make it a mistake. They had, I think, eight standard roles. And for example, one, they said they called it in German realizator. So people who realize things. 
which after, after rethinking was totally stupid because everybody is realizing something. So it's a, it's a generic role which doesn't say anything. So uh, they started with eight roles. I think it's a moment there, there are four or five standard roles. So they, this makes the process much too complicated. And uh, can, you, can you give me the possibility to share? Nathan, okay. Uh, before I share, um, in in one thing I learned too is uh, this 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 organization which I'm not talking about is called Prospecia Rara. It's a, it's a small NGO, thirty people, and they take care about domestic plants and and animals in Switzerland. And I work for them already since uh, nearly three years. And what I learned is that it's really important to start. I say it now very bluntly, where the pain is. So what, 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 where, where is the organization? Where, where, where are there needs to change something? And we started very basic uh, in, 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 in this organization. And now, I think half a year ago, I, I talked with the management team and said, hey, listen, I think we're not progressing very well. And I sometimes have a bad feeling about sending you bills because you don't really proceed so much. So what can we do? And they said, yes, okay, uh, something which they're really needing is um, uh, a place in the organization where, where we can deal about strategic issues. And, and so they said, okay, then, then, then let's, let's start with that. So we had one and a half day, we, we constituted a, a circle in German, it's called Weitsicht, a beautiful name they found themselves. So a place where they look ahead of short term but long term perspective freely translated in, in english and 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 we did this all aligned with the management team and we also cleared very well uh, what issues uh, should come in this circle who should come in this circle and now i i have i have the feeling they're really starting off now in in this process of constituting uh, the, the different the different uh, circles and roles and and also in this circle, we defined who will moderate it. We defined also the decision-making process. I, I taught them as good as I can the consent-making process because in the circle of, I think there's something like 12 or 11 people in this Weitsicht group, the strategic layer, you could say. And, and I told them, please don't vote, but uh, do it by majority vote. You, it, it won't work. And consents also won't work. So I really... Uh, uh, Give you the recommendation to do it with uh, consent uh, uh, decision making. I guess most of you will know what, what this is. It's one social catholic uh, practice, uh, which is necessary to deal in such in such a such, such a place. Now let me think about role. Ah, what is also interesting is in COVID times, I I learned something about myself that you can also facilitate a role mapping. Each, uh, workshop online. I before didn't believe this could work, but it works. You need a good preparation, as I said, with a template. That was a word I was thinking about. You need a template and, and people have to fill in their template. And I did this in this pharma company uh, very efficiently. I think it was two hours, two hours and a half per team. There were about five, six teams very well prepared. All people had prepared their templates. So we could walk through all persons about, okay, what is your perception, what you're doing, what does the other team members think about it? And then we defined the, the roles inside, inside the circles. So yeah, again, a good preparation is, is absolutely necessary. Something else, ah, to, to, to end up, um, my, I'm not a specialist in, in, in Pierum. I'm a companion since, since the start, I think. But uh, my, my focus is always, that's why I give now a, a very specific view on, on, on role mapping and, and role and the circle constitution. But I think if you do the stand alone, it won't work. Very simply said. And I would like to end with this. Uh, for me, I learned over this six years, I'm now working in this, in this field of, of shared governance. There are some basics of inner work which which are necessary otherwise it just stays in peerdom somewhere on a website but nobody will see any effect in daily work and i just want to name them and this is my personal opinion perhaps you have different opinions for, for me is number first 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 is a, a feedback process 
So if you define accountabilities in a role without any uh, a feedback process, and people will say, yeah, somewhere in Piedom, my accountabilities are written, but how do I know that I'm doing good in my role? How do I know this? How do I get to know this? So this is for me really number one. Otherwise, yeah, it, it's just a paper, paper thing. Uh, so the second one is meeting structures. How do we how do we govern our meetings? How do we deal with that? The third one is decision making process. I gave you an example, and the fourth one is how to deal with tensions. But I think in the priority is is feedback process. And you know, I don't know what countries or organizations you work, but uh, this is really a, a very tough issue. In this pharma of organization, for example, I did a consent decision making process with forty people in the room about how to design the feedback process, and it was one of the hard parts of my workshop time I, I can remember because it lasted about four hours and people were getting really tired and frustrated but I kept the process but I said hey listen let, let us find good enough for now safe enough to try a minimum of a process how do I get to know if I do my role well or not well and in the end I found out they, they, were, they had a very bad so perhaps kind of trauma about dealing with feedback. Feedback was always aligned with negative feedback. Feedback was always aligned with control. So they didn't, I, I was just, I, I lost then the mandate even after that workshop because I, I was a bad guy uh, saying, hey, listen, without accountability and feedback process, you won't make it. So yeah, that, this is what I'd like, would, uh, I'd like to end now. I'm in time, I think, eh, Nathan? Yeah. yeah, perfect. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for that taster. And now the, the questions are pouring in, so I hope you're you're ready for it uh, with your... Um, the first is from, is from John, who's asking, uh, around the level of specificity in rule definition, do you have any, I don't know, any tips and tricks or have you noticed anything with people being overly verbose or not describing the roles enough is there what's the sweet spot yeah the sweet spot i, I now realize i forget to show you the, the prospecia rara part but we can skip that but when i when i looked in it before this webinar i saw <laughs> they wrote they wrote something like one a four page full of bullet points about the description of the of the of the circle and then it starts already. I think I think then, then the granulation has to be in one view, five to six bullet points. Otherwise, otherwise it's just uh, it, it's too much information at the same time. So I think uh, if you look at accountabilities, no, start with the, with the beginning uh, contribution to the to, to to the organization or to the purpose of of the organization. Two two sentences, perhaps one. And then further, what, what are the accountabilities? And four to five bullet points. It should be very clear in one view, aha. Those are the five basic aspects this person is accountable for in this role. Is this an answer? That's, that's great. And I would maybe add on top of that, the observation that if you start describing a role with too little information that and then work in it with that like shell of a of a description and then see if it starts to create tensions where people are like that's uh, we're working on the same thing i thought that was my role and the moment that there's a problem arising because it wasn't described well enough that's when you start to think do we need to further carve out a definition put a focus split it into two like do it based on the tensions arising from not having over described it. But if you start on the, you know, writing the great American novel for each role, uh, you're probably describing work that's not actually going on, but is hypothetical. Exactly. There's one last tip. I think you will go into this later, Nathan, is in some organization, but only few, I managed to convince them to, to give a time to the role. So because the time frame of the role uh, yeah, makes oblige me after a year or the time you set to say, okay, is Mark still the right person to do this role? Is Mark willing to do this role? Or what, what has changed with the role? So it helps you to oh, really to be conscious about uh, is this the right person fitting with the role, vice versa. Yeah, I like that point. So it's not only about performance in the role, but it's also about reassessment, about role fit every every certain amount of time. Like, is this 
across the organization the best person to be holding this given the current capacities and energy levels and I don't know uh, I think that reassessment can lead to to a little bit of shuffling around that that's healthy to be done and one one add to that Nathan I, I put this on the flip chart behind me I mean it's a basic mindset behind role-based leadership is that an organization is not a machine but it's something living and evolving evolving permanently and by working role-based you can you can change every no not every day but you can regularly check is this the right uh, framework we need so so yeah it's 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 a living system which can and Pierum can support this Super. Okay, next questions. Uh, feedback. Is it always person to person or can you use data as feedback? Well, um, Nathan, uh, Pierom has uh, integrated a feedback tool inside Pierom. There's unfortunately, Nathan, no client of me who, who adopted it. <laughs> Uh, they, I, I can give feedback to somebody by myself out of my own initiative, or I can ask for feedback from, for somebody or myself. So this is kind of the tool itself uh, gives it. Um, is it no, that's not the answer to your question. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I think I, from what I understood, it's uh, what forms can feedback come in, and I think uh, I think you're you're touching. I, I, I personally, when I would lead a team, I, I lead, led many teams before my consultancy, I would, I would develop a, a safe space in my team so that you can do this in the team because it gives you multi-perspectives on, on a role. And you can do this perhaps once in a quarter or, or I don't know, once depending on the stage of development of your team. So I think then, it, then, then you have the best possibility to really share perspectives on the role itself. Super. Okay, next, Romina is up with a question about maturity or ripeness. When is it the right time to start mapping roles? Thanks a lot, Romina, for this tough question. <laughs> yeah, this is there. I made some mistakes uh, starting too early. Um, I talked with about this with Nathan in, in a different way, uh, which sounds perhaps weird for you, but but I I often thought about this question: When is the right moment to bring Pierum in? When is the right moment to talk about role-based leadership? And I think, I mean, my 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 area of work is mindset. It's not it's not structures or or or, or role mapping in itself. But when I show organizations how their structures could evolve to something new like in my, in my back instead of an org chart and you, you see these bubbles and circles and rows I had many times the experience that people say aha that's that's what you mean by shared governance governance sorry that's what you mean by living organism aha that's what you mean by role-based leadership so something I'm not a I'm not a brain expert but I have the feeling by by seeing it on the on the screen then they think Ah, now I start understanding what this is about, about a horizontal leadership instead of vertical leadership. So, so I think I think you can start very early in, in my way about talking about it. But if the organization is ready for, for role mapping, my learning after six years is start where a team is willing to do something. Don't make a overall sort of roll out. Now every team has to, but, but start where there is a pain or a need or interest in, in working on this and, and give them the safety of making the experience and spread it. And then the others will, will, will follow. You have always early adopters like everywhere. Great. Um... How about decision making? Do you have any recommendations for uh, consent decision making? Oh, and well, uh, and maybe maybe just to tie it into the theme here, how does that how might that relate to role maintenance definition? Well, let's start with the first part. I, I I developed for myself a very very simple version. I'm I'm trained by, by James Priest and Lily of of S three. And they have a more elaborated, of course, process of consent decision. But but I I make I make a sort of little bites so that, that the client can taste what what this means, 
and and I developed uh, three three gestures, and so I there's a proposal of uh, I don't know. Uh, do we want to have Mark as consultant uh, or uh, yes, we want to Mark as a consultant. And then I give them the options of saying three gestures. One is yes, I fully apply. Or uh, one is uh, I, I have a mixed feeling. And one is I, I want to offer uh, 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 Einwand, what do you say this in English, uh, Nathan? So no proposal. Objection. objection. Yeah. So I, I want to I want to offer an objection to make this proposal even better. And then I say it's good enough for now, safe enough to try. We're not looking for the hundred percent solution. And they start playing around with these gestures. And 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 I make very clear that in the end we 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 need only hands up. And there can be some like this, but as this is not an argument but more feeling, it doesn't really count. But we listen to them. We listen to their mixed feelings but it, it has, has no effect on the decision making so this is something where i make some baby steps with them and 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 for example in this weitzig constitution we did it all via this process how who will be in the group uh, how will we decide uh, uh, on what issues you want to work on this uh, this this group so we, we made all this decision by consent Great, consent all the way down, perfect. So um, Anna is asking, when you're going through a process, a change process with a team, um, and especially with the key decision makers or sponsors, uh, do you have any, any, yeah, any observations about ways that you've supported them to install a change that tends to last versus those that fall flat? I'm also paraphrasing a bit yeah. here. Sorry, Anna. Yeah, no, well, in the beginning of, of my work, I was strongly, before I hold Pedrom and self-management, I, I was strongly focused on culture change, team development, mindset change, et cetera. And, and what I learned by Frederick Laloux is that it's not enough. That if, if you don't work on the frameworks, on, on, on the structures and processes at the same time, culture change won't last very long. So it has to be aligned, a strategy, culture, and structure. We know this triangle. So when I get into an organization, I, I tell them, I ask them, how much time do you, do you want to spend and how much money also you want to spend in this process? Is this more quick, quick, quick and dirty approach or, or do you really intend to, to step into a longer term development? And second, I say, uh, you, need, you need inner work and you need outer work. And very simply uh, now summarized and the inner work, I gave you some examples and the outer work is, yeah, this is one possibility in going into role-based leadership. And this is work, this is really work. If, if you if you if you stop working like this, this the, the, the machine thinking uh, vertical leadership, it means a lot of work. It doesn't mean no leadership. It needs a lot of work to, to establish really a mindset and structures and process which are based on, on horizontal leadership principles. So I tell them it's not an easy job you're starting because our world is for 80, 90 percent machine thinking and you're trying to do something new. We need a new language. We need new. Yeah. So this is my approach. Great. And that segues quite elegantly to Thea's question on uh, on leader jobs and maybe classical leadership positions being broken into roles uh, when transforming to a role-based setup. What what do you see as the, the standard yeah. uh, a leaders there? It's exploded and what's left over? Yeah. One, one, wonderful question. I, 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 yeah, I forgot to talk about this. I think, I think, if a, if a leader decides who has, for example, this Bruno, the CEO of Special Olympics, when he decided to step in the journey with me, it was clear for me that he is not a guy who, who has a strong ego. But he's he's a reflective person who felt the way he dealt with leadership before wasn't always very effective. So he was looking also for for new manners. And and so the issue of ego is is the biggest hurdle, I think, in in, in moving for the leaders. I mean now, 
for uh, not only for leaders, but very strongly by the leaders. I wrote an article some years ago about, about the role of the CEO in a change process towards role-based or, or, or horizontal leadership. And I think there is a very strong role. I mean, Lalu talks about this, the, the source holder, the, the space holder for, for getting this organization moving forward. So, yeah. And when I see in the beginning that they're just talking blah, blah, but at the same time, the leader just wants to keep all his power at the same time, then I all already said, listen, I'm not sure I'm, I'm the right person for you. So there needs a bit of sort of basic uh, yeah, will to reflect my own role and, and thinking about my ego. So. Uh... Yeah, and I have, I've also noticed that leaders should be able also to do the exercise of being like, what have I worked on in the last three months? What do I actually do on a day-to-day -day basis? Was it hiring? Was it, I don't know performance management reviews uh, and and split the work into roles which are pretty clearly defined i think when people think of management or man like middle management layers there's a kind of common understanding of all of the tasks that go into that type of position and may i add something nathan i i had lunch today with with ted rao uh, who is one of the founders of sociocracy for all he was visiting uh, europe and and uh, little switzerland and and he told me an interesting story. They, they are organized also so on the basis of sociocracy, and and he he said that his role as as CEO or as I, he, he, told, he named it differently was about fifteen percent of his time, and he spent fifty hours a week. So he just he just spent three hours a week on 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 governing uh, the this organization. And he tells this story, he told me, to his clients. They said, listen, my, and then he said, hey, what? Only three hours away, a week you're, you're in the leadership role. And yeah, he's a founder, one of the founders, but he has many different roles. And one of them is, is being, being the, yeah, the governor of the, of, of the whole thing. So I, I like this story because it makes clear to the other person that if you really... Uh, make 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 roles instead of position then you see yeah how much how much is needed yeah? and this is another hint for the role mapping which i forgot i didn't do it till now but some of the clients wanted it and then uh, abandoned it again is you can also put a percentage behind the role so if you work 100 percent, you can say okay 10 percent i'm i'm delivering in this role which helps clarifying also how much time do i want to contribute to this role and this, this, but this part is always a bit tricky because it becomes very detailed, and and people stop thinking about role-based leadership, but about percentages. But it can be helpful. Uh, this also segues nicely into the next question, which is about a concept brought up from Anna about side roles, and from what I've understood, side roles are uh, roles that you weren't hired to do so they're not in your primary focus from the beginning so you're taking them on as a side job and um, these roles can be volunteered for if i've understood correctly like you can take them on in another team and uh however when they leave the team then there's still some tasks to be done that role has a vacancy who who do the tasks go, go to by default and what possible ways are there of of distributing those tasks again uh, if nobody's holding the role? <laughs> Hope I got that right. This is this is about, for example, cleaning the the kitchen or 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 the refrigerator once a month. So the, not the nice roles, I guess, uh, are the side roles. Uh, I I. I must say I I haven't had this before. I can't answer it. But what I can add to this issue, which I forgot, is I mean it's a process I described was starting from where people are. But if you build up an organization, which I also I, I had some startups, uh, which I facilitated the change, then you 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 design roles which haven't been uh, realized yet, and then there's a question: who will who's the right person to fit with that role? So, for example, two weeks ago or four weeks ago, I, I was facilitating a group of 12 um, physiotherapists and logotherapists. 
and about it was about the question who's going to step into the change team so again the circle of change team and then i said okay everybody can can um, not promote but can recommend somebody so you can't recommend yourself so you have to recommend somebody else in the circle and then i made a list and then there were four people in the end who were recommended and then I asked them, okay, well, are you willing to take this role? And one person said, no, I'm just six months with the organization. I, I, I'm too too young in this. I, I don't know how to, how to do this. I step out. So, and then the three, they, they were in the change team. So, the, but this is one of many, many possibilities in, in mapping the role to, the, to, to, to a new role to the right person. So you could also say, okay, I, I recommend uh, Mark in cleaning the refrigerator and, and R R R Romina for, for uh, cleaning the kitchen, or uh, I don't know if this works with, with the side roles. I'm not sure. Yeah, so I, I like that idea. And you're also touching on something that we didn't really talk about before, which is how roles get assigned. And I like this idea of nomination that you raise up, which is... Um, yeah, nominating somebody into and maybe even into an elected role. That's something that I'll go into in a minute as well. Um, but you can also, other things I've seen are role rotations. So you take mm -hmm. a role like trash can emptying and you're like, look, it's it's like our chore board up on the wall at home. It's like every week it, you move from one one sector to another and everybody gets to do it, but you only do it once a week, every 12 weeks or whatever, I don't know. Um, so that's another option. And actually on, on the idea of role rotation, a really extreme example of this is in some Japanese companies where they will take people inside of one department and rotate them into roles in another department um, under the idea of like, you need to see the company from a completely different perspective and learn it again. Otherwise you get too comfortable in your thinking and so forth. So if you're wanting to really radically shake things up, you can consider some role rotation on a more dramatic level. Um, maybe recommended for innovation thinking or something. But... I, I, for me, the feedback process is is the best way in really checking if 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 the role and the and the person is is fitting well together, and and but this needs inner work because people are not trained to to give feedback or to receive feedback. So you can't you yeah depends on the maturity of of the team and the persons. I also like that idea of uh, using your current role portfolio as a, a position for having conversations around reviewing what the what what's going on. Like, okay, this is what you say you're doing right now, or what you're committed to. Are there parts of that that you would rather offload? Are there parts of it that you're just ignoring, and why is that? Um, yeah, is there somewhere else you'd rather be? I think that can also one of the advantages of splitting your work into roles and then having this this more fluid profile or portfolio of roles is that you can visit different segments of your job and say okay is that part still exciting me do i have, do i want to be working on that or what can i be doing to um yeah to swap that with somebody else or or not um great so i'm going to pop into the next question already so when we're talking about roles and circles uh yeah. Do we quickly end up with the term holacracy? Or do you have any kind of experience or an opinion about this strict concept? And maybe this is just a semantic question, but I can also say from the Puritan side, as soon as you show can, any nested circles, everybody's like, oh, that's holacracy. And uh, do you have an opinion I, on that? I, 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 I met, I heard Brian Robertson in, in Holland on a conference there were also Lalu and, and Joste Block was, was speaking and and he didn't really inspire me, I must say, honestly, it, it felt like a, how do you say this, a repeat, a repeat version of a YouTube film. And and but but this is six, seven years ago. So perhaps I'm sure holacracy evolved uh, in, in the time and they got more flexible. But I, I, I don't work with holacracy and I didn't met organizations till now working with me who, who came from holacracy, but, but I'm, I'm a tailor-made guy. And for me, this, this doesn't fit together with the holacracy course concept, but I fully respect when others do so. I mean, but I'm not good in this. 
Yeah, and uh, Luis, I would maybe just add that it, it tends to, we're we're always looking for vocabulary that's a little more inclusive, and I feel like holacracy uh, stole those words, <laughs> and maybe not stole, but they they definitely made popularize them. And so often when you're talking about roles or circles, then it it implies that you're following the holocratic constitution. It might be that you are, but there, I mean, in sociocracy, they talk about roles and circles as well. That's actually where holacracy was inspired from for for that. So I think at the end of the day, it's, uh, yeah, it, you can work in roles and not know anything about holacracy. And that's that's a little bit my mission to 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 uh, in this world to explain that you, you can just split a job position into multiple roles and not know anything about self-management not know anything about holacracy or anything. You don't need to have a degree in management to, to understand roles. Bjorn, Bjorn wants to say something. I see in the upper left. Yeah, I'll, I'll join in and uh, hi to everyone. So just from my my experience, holacracy or agile or, or whatever, you know, you have like some people are ideologists. They are in it for the pure form. <laughs> And whenever you give something that is too complicated to, to a team, it, it collapses, you know? So unless maybe it was working out, but I don't know, because I've been part of that more, the agile the IT people, you know, maybe there was a way of people really requiring this kind of production. Um, on the other side, let's say when, when you throw this on, uh, on a system, and I think uh, I mean I think Mark, I think you've been working with the system where I came from in, with uh, doctors without borders. Uh, I'm not sure if I saw your name or it was someone else. Maybe not you. That was another one, but uh, Nathan knows. So anyway, so in there was thrown something. We're going to do it like this, and then by doing googling and searching and getting curious, I figured out it's something like holacracy. And for me, as a country director, kind of them kind of getting a big change project on my shoulders, it would have been very useful to give me the link to holacracy or whatever, or the Wikipedia thing, and to say, this is your starting point. This is something like something visual, some something to refer to, but let's not go to be purists because mm -hmm. then that's when everything is collapsing. So it's kind of they both fit, they're yeah. both relevant somehow. I agree, Bjorn. Great, thanks. Um, to keep things moving along with my promise of showing some of the tool and practicality, I will I'll do a quick uh, detour and, and share my screen over there just so that we, uh, but uh, yeah, the, for me, the discussion is incredibly interesting and there are still quite a few questions and comments. So I'll, I'll try to be brief on the tool side. Same thing goes, if you have any questions, um, uh, about, yeah, I don't know <laughs> where to click or anything like that. I'm more than happy to answer that as well. So um, here we are. I will just steal the the screen story here. Okay, good. You with me? Yes. Super, yeah. It's it's being shared. I'm sorry, I don't have any feedback from it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is this um, library of public organizations that we have on on our website. And I think this is actually a place where if you have questions about how other people out there in the world are defining roles or clustering them together, um, yeah, to which level of or degree they are um, describing them. This is a great starting point because these are essentially all um, able to be. Yeah, you dive into the organization and you can see exactly what they're what they're doing. So that when you go into the maps, you can go into their into their um, into the there and see exactly how they're defining their themselves. So I think that's important and and. Uh, a good reference to have in case you're wondering what to do. And then I wanted to really very briefly go through the super basics inside of Peerdom on, on roles because 
again, we're just talking about roles. Um, if you're starting with a fresh map, there's a pretty easy way to add a first role, which is literally just, just the first role. Um, the, the, the dialogue to add a role is, is only going to ask you for a name, I believe. And, and beyond that, it's up to you how much information you want to fill in. So this whole concept of like skeleton roles, or um, I think in by our definition, the most atomic type of role is just a name. And beyond that, you start specifying more around that. It's also our belief that a role should have a purpose, um, but that's optional in this case. Again, to remit, like to not be dogmatic, we the, we make all of this optional. Same thing with responsibilities. You don't have to add any, but you can add them and you can add several um, notes as well that can be uh, related to the role. There are a couple other options when you're adding a role to choose it as an external role or a representative role. If you make it an external role, it will pop up outside of your main circle. These are usually for... Um, reserved for like freelancers or maybe board members or people who are sitting technically outside of the, of the organizational boundary that's somehow uh up for up for discussion about where that boundary lies um and representatives uh, is our generic generic term for a special kind of role that doesn't mean necessarily that they are, I don't know, a manager. They could be a manager. It could be, uh, if you're using Holacracy lead link or rep link, it could be, um, uh, it could be a spokesperson for the for the the circle. It could literally be whatever you want it to be. It just has some sort of special status as compared to the other roles inside of that organization inside of that group. So when you add roles. Um, actually, as you as you look at the tool from the beginning, it's pretty bare bones. So when you're making the map, you can add roles, you can add a group and put roles inside of that group, or you can add your colleagues. And, and I think to get started, it's really a matter of defining some of these roles and grouping them together. If you've already um, put some, uh, some roles down, so I'm just hopping to a map that already has some content so that we can look at this. Each of these were defined as a role. So uh, the roles are, as, as you click around on the roles, I, I, if you haven't done this yet before, every circle is a role. And when you click on the role, you'll see those fields that we, that we talked about before. Now, if you didn't put in responsibilities or a purpose, they just wouldn't appear here in the description, again, to kind of keep things minimized and you only see what information is there. So. I think that's an important design philosophy with us is that we keep things, don't show anything you don't need to see. And um, the, the important thing with the roles is that, yeah, you define these roles and you can kind of put them into different groups. If, if you make a mistake while, uh, while putting it somewhere and it doesn't appear in the group that you want it to be. So just from a high level view, this is the organization. And then you have these little light blue things are different groups. Um, and inside of the groups, there are roles. So if, for instance, I had made a mistake and put this networker role in the wrong place, you can move a role or copy it as well. And that can be done by right-clicking on it and doing this kind of stuff, the fast menu way, or you can go into the preferences or into the, yeah, I don't know, the editor mode on the role. And by doing and at the bottom um, of of that editor dialog, you are able to copy or move. And so, if I wanted to move this networker role, then you can choose where you move it to. Right now, you I would like to move it still on this live map that I'm working on, and I don't know, I'll move it into the design team. And yeah, effectively, what that does is it does exactly what you would expect. Over here now, we have the networker role because I moved it from one place to another. We are working on um, on dragging and dropping as well, which should make that a, a seamless process. So um, what else is there to say about roles? So that's moving a role, defining a role, uh, assigning a role. So who's going to actually work in it? When you, when you have a role that's uh, selected, you can go to this little person bit next to the holders 
And that's where you're able to add one or more colleagues to the role. Now, um, by default, this percentage won't be there unless you've installed the contribution app. And that's something I'll touch on really quickly. Um, but the focus will be there. And the idea is if there's a role where two people are working on it, you might want to get a little more specific about which context one person is supposed to be upholding the responsibilities or, or another. So that's just further specification within a certain role about who's really responsible to avoid accountability diffusion. Um, then we have, uh, yeah, I mean, I, now is as good of a time as any to describe this contribution. So you can also optionally put in a percentage or a full-time in a full-time employee amount or a, a number of hours per week that's, uh, able to be modulated. But once you install in the app store, you have to install this contribution app. And once it's installed, then for each role, for each person, you can describe what percentage that person is working in that role. And, and so when you're in there, we had just described her working um, at 40% in that role. And what's interesting is that on the map, then when you click on any role, you see how, how much contribution is being uh, dedicated toward that role. And at the, at the team or group level, you will see the total amount of contribution of all the people holding roles inside of the inside of that. So the contribution can be seen on the map, but it also pops up on a profile. And the profile, um, uh, the profile is by definition um, landing on this roles page, which collects all of the roles that somebody's been assigned to. And that gives an overview of all of the roles that they're involved in. So each person has a personalized view of which roles they're currently working on. And this person is involved in 11, but they also have, because of that contribution app, they've defined, um, they've defined a percentage of contribution inside of each of their roles. So you can also edit that here and change the contribution to, to describe how much, what percentage they're working at in a given role. Nathan? Um, yes? I see a question here which you could integrate. Jesper Toft is asking, what do you do about physical or geographical dependency in a role? And I would add to that interfaces to other circles or other roles. Yeah, um, whew, that's a beautiful question and a tough challenge. Um, currently, I would say within within the software, there are ways of hacking it, and and there's no like sexy geographic location of a role or a team or a person. The ways of hacking it are are uh, as such. So for an individual, you can you can add additional uh, fields inside of the the description of the profile, um, and that's done through the settings, the uh, the organizational settings. I think it's called a peer profile. Uh, edition. I don't know. I have to, we'll find it together. Hang on. A but colleague remember... description. And on the role side, um, you could add, um, you might want to color code. This is one thing that you could think about doing. So some roles, if they are in one geographic location or another, you change the color of them so that you can kind of see on the map where they're coming from. Also in the notes section, you would be able to add additional um, notes. And if you contact us, this is not a kind of public facing feature, but totally possible for us to do for you. You can customize these role descriptions to have any any column, um, sorry, any section you'd like. So you can add a section like geographic location or uh, place, and that then you're able to enter that place for every role. Um, as well. So I hope I that met on, I, I made, uh, uh, I don't know if it still exists, but I did, don't see it now. Uh, what I did sometimes, uh, you describe in the role the focus. And for example, the focus, you can say, I focus on, for example, region Bern and the yeah. other on the region Zurich. This could also be an option or not. Absolutely. So in, in this case, the focus is a, a based on or tied to a role holder, which uh, which means that uh, you it's so in like here this this role the networker role there are two people holding it and they are they are specifically focusing on some part of that work um 
I think for the, yeah, for geography, those are the quick ideas that come to my head, but we are kind of trying to play around with that in a, in a more intelligent way with, with an actual geographic map as well. So you can see things uh, in that, in that sense. Um, yeah, I'm, we're coming closely toward the end. So I'll, I'll spend just two more minutes jumping in on, on the, on the other parts that I kind of promised to talk about. One important thing to understand is if you add a role as a representative, it starts to look a little embossed like this one. It's sticking out a bit, you could say, as compared to the others, which are more flat. Uh, when So I can see that this orange one is a representative because, um, because it sticks out. So when you assign a role as a representative, it starts to get this. And when you copy a role to another place, when you go to copy a role, you have the option to copy it as an independent copy or as a mirrored copy. And when you make a mirrored copy, what will happen is it will turn two tones like this. And the two tones uh, is an indication that it's been mirrored somewhere else. And when it's mirrored somewhere else, that means that any change you make to the role description will update all of the other roles across the organization that have been mirrored with it. So. Uh, that's a good way of if you have a repeating role or what Mark was talking about earlier, kind of structural roles or core roles, um, those those can be mirrored and you can edit them. And then there's a nice little feature, which is that you can see which other holders there are across the organization holding that same mirrored role, but in in the different team contexts. So. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is the story about mirroring roles and copying them. Also, from above, I can tell you that this one has been mirrored here, has been mirrored there and there because it's two tones and they're the same color. So that touches well on the coloring aspect. Add color to roles to give them meaning. If if they if it doesn't have some sort of spatial meaning, then it's probably just going to be noise. And and so my tip is, you know, the things that end up repeating themselves on the map. So if you're mirroring something, it's smart to give it color because if you just mirror a bunch of white rolls, then you won't know that you won't see the visual relationship between them. Um, I also like coloring the the groups, kind of giving a backdrop that really clearly shows uh, how they're how they're being clustered, and. Um, and yeah, I think on coloring, those are those are some tips. I, I like this hybrid uh, hybrid local or global roles idea, Jesper. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is on coloring, and then I think just a final note from what I'm looking at here. Another visual sign that I see is this tiny triangle, and uh, this triangle is an indication that that role has been elected. So it's an electable role. And this, if you install the elections app in the in the um, in the app store, adds the ability for any role that you can set it to be elected. And when it's elected, uh, it, you can set a term limit for each person. And then there is a, a kind of election view that shows which which up elections are upcoming. And I guess in this case, most are passed. Uh, but when the person was elected until and when they uh, they're up for a reelection. So I'm I'm kind of jumping around different concepts and roles. The main idea is you can create them, copy them, paste them, uh, duplicate and mirror them, make them representative, external roles. Um, and and then I think the final the final touch is I'll just give a, a shout out to the drafts app. If you install the drafts app, this is a way of playing around with alternative visuals for your organization, different role titles, different structurings or whatever. And when you create a draft, basically you can take your, your map and copy it to a new draft and that will duplicate your whole map and then you can play around with it how you want or start one from scratch. And when you go in, you have a kind of draft space where you can play with anything however you'd like. And the kind of secret feature in there is that if you have some part of your draft which you are happy with, so you can only work on some, some part of that draft, you can also copy or move that part of the draft and choose to, to move it to your live map. So you also have the possibility of taking sections of your live map and moving them around 
to drafts or vice versa. So I think those are the main underlying tools for working with roles inside of Peerdom. And I want to wrap up with this part of the tool bit. And uh, Mark, do you have any parting words? No, I just wrote in the chat that if people like have more questions, I do my best in answering them. You can write me a mail. Super. And yeah, to respect their time, I'll I'll uh I'll, I'll wrap it up here. But it's it's difficult because I see some juicy questions in the and comments in that in that thread. I'll try to I'll try to get back on those. And if you have other questions, just write us at any time. We have um some thoughts. And uh, thank you all for coming in such spirited ways and we'll uh, enjoy the rest of your day or evening or morning, <laughs> all of it. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.